We all go through different chapters in our lives, some stranger than others. Welcome to Strange Chapters, where we bring you true stories of the strange, the macabre, the paranormal, and the supernatural. So sit back, relax, and let's get to this week's featured author and their stories. Hey everybody, welcome back to Strange Chapters. Thanks for joining us today. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, today we have part three of three of the H.J. Tidy series from the book Ghost Stories, a collection of the world's most haunted locations and paranormal encounters. And this story is about the infamous Sally House and the history and hauntings behind the Sally House. And hopefully you all have enjoyed this series. I really enjoyed narrating it with the Bell Witch, the Myrtle's Plantation, and now the Sally House. So sit back, relax, and let's get strange. What's Haunting the Sally House? The Sally House in Atchison, Kansas, is a 19th century house that reportedly became haunted by the ghost of a little girl named Sally after her untimely death there. Of course, some have questioned the validity of this. Paranormal experts have said something unexplainable is happening on the property, while skeptics had diminished this as pure nonsense. Despite the conflict of opinions, the Sally House is widely regarded as one of the most haunted places in America, with thousands of visits from tourists seeking a paranormal experience. Who is Sally? The story of Sally begins with Dr. Charles Finney. The Finney family moved to the Sally House, as it would come to be known, in the 1870s. The doctor opened his practice there, including examination rooms. The front of the house served as office space, and the upstairs as the family living quarters. One day, Dr. Finney heard his neighbor screaming for help before coming to the house for assistance. They were carrying their daughter and begging for the doctor to intervene. Finney surmised the girl had a ruptured appendix and immediately operated on her. Reportedly, he did not have time to make it to his examination rooms. Instead, the operation took place in his kitchen. The girl was set down, thrashing and screaming, but before the doctor could begin the procedure, he needed to sedate her. He eventually got her sedated enough to lie still. This took so long that valuable time was lost, and in the subsequent rush, Finney did not realize the girl was still wide awake during the surgery. Thus, she felt everything as he operated. Unfortunately, she died from the shock of the surgical pain and extreme blood loss. The deceased young girl was named Sally, and it's theorized that her spirit haunts the house to this day. Conflicting reports claim that Sally's surgery and resulting death happened in the basement, where Dr. Finney traditionally consulted and operated. This is a popular theory, as the basement of the house has been said to be one of the most haunted spots on the premises. However, there's no evidence of either surgery in historical documentation, so there's no way to say for sure that the event occurred. There is little to no proof that Sally was a young girl in Atchison at all. No records show that a girl died in the Finney house. And journalists Farlander and Vickers report anthropologist Sean Daly as saying there was never a young girl by that name who lived in the town. He asserts that there was no paranormal activity associated with the house until the 1990s, though even he has witnessed unusual and unexplained activity on the property. He does not claim that it is impossible that the house is haunted, just that there is no proof of Sally's existence. However, this could be because her life and death documentation may have been lost in the many years since, or because her family was poor and never documented her at all. Of course, 19th century record keeping was not nearly as advanced or thorough as it is now. The last Finney of the family lived in the house until 1947, when it was sold and passed on to new owners. People have reported many stories about Sally over the years. She was first thought to be a peaceful spirit, but there have been stories of visitors leaving the house with scratches and bruises. These acts of violence are viewed by some as being demonic in nature and have added to the celebrity of the Sally House. Nonetheless, unexplained movements have been reported, like stuffed toys moving on their own and photos being turned upside down. For those who have visited, it is undeniable that something strange is happening at the Sally House. The Pickmans While the ghost of the Sally House has a long history, the story gained popularity in the 1990s when the Pickman family moved in. Newlyweds Deborah and Tony Pickman moved into the house in 1993 while Deborah was pregnant with their son. At first, things seemed perfectly normal in their new home. Their lives were very exciting. They were blissfully anticipating the birth of their first child. There was nothing out of the ordinary until something attacked Tony in his own home. While the Pigments had noticed unusual events in their home before the attacks began, it was only afterward that they understood there was another entity in the home. 
It is important to note that the pigmen's experience in the Sally House was so harrowing, it drove Deborah to write a book about it, titled The Sally House Haunting, A True Story, where she chronicles the family's ordeal with the spirit residing in their home. Deborah includes passages from her journal from this time and photos of their lives attempting to prove that they experienced a ghost living with them. A lot of her first-hand experience informs our knowledge of the goings-on in this house. In addition to this, the family has spoken publicly about their ordeal. Deborah and Tony's story has been read by hundreds of people worldwide and has enticed many to research the paranormal. Having a first-hand account of something so strange makes it easier to understand how these things occur. Deborah writes that while she was a paranormal believer long before the events at the Sally House, her husband was not. Tony was incredibly skeptical and would not easily believe the house was haunted. However, over the two years they lived in the home, Tony no longer claimed skepticism as his perception of spirits and demons changed forever. The pigments have since become paranormal researchers and have spoken at conferences about their experiences. Abnormal Behavior Before any attack started, the pigments noticed abnormal behavior in the house. Certain spots in the home were often freezing with no explanation for the temperature drop. The house did not have any centralized air conditioning, so the change struck them as very odd. Deborah speaks specifically about the first time the presence of another being truly shook her. On a hot night in the third trimester of her pregnancy, a blood-curdling scream awakened her. Then, she heard the sound of someone running down the stairs of the house. In her sleepy haze, she assumed someone had broken into the home and attempted to set up, but what felt like a heavy object struck her in the face. This chilled her to the bone, and she screamed as well, waking Tony, who was sleeping next to her. Once awake, Tony also started screaming, though it was unclear if he was attacked as well. They did not stop until they realized they had no idea what they were screaming about. The pigments also noticed that technology in the home did not work as designed, particularly in the kitchen. For example, the time displayed on their oven would inexplicably change. The digital timers they set would malfunction. They began to make special note of this, paying close attention to how the times would vary and found the clocks would go from displaying 4 minutes left to 14 minutes and back again. Additionally, there are of course the classic hallmarks of a haunted house. There was unexplained stomping through the house, knocks, and thuds when there was no one present, and the sounds of furniture moving. Dogs would bark at nothing, and cats would become suddenly frightened and run out of the room. Cold spots continued to appear at random, and the Pikmins would even feel someone brush past them from time to time. Once the Pikmin's son was born, paranormal activity began to centralize in his room. Toys would be moved from their spots, and the bedroom light would switch on randomly. A neighbor once asked the Pikmins why they kept the light on in the nursery all the time, especially as they had a small baby living in the house. This baffled them as they turned their light off every night. Their son, a happy baby, would often be found playing on his own, smiling and babbling in the thin air as though he were talking to someone. They would sometimes hear the baby giggling while alone. Deborah once found his toys arranged in a circle in the middle of the room. Neither she nor her husband had created this formation. This incident caused an uneasy feeling and they cleaned up the toys, switched off the light, and went downstairs. When checking on the child later, they were horrified to find the light was on again. Also, a stuffed bear was back on the floor where the circle had been. As their son was a newborn and there was no other people in the house, it made no sense how this had happened. The first sighting of the ghost came from Tony, who claims that he saw a young girl in the home wearing an 1800s-style white dress. The presence confused him, but could not deny what he saw with his own eyes. The first place he ever spotted her was the kitchen, the suspected location of Sally's untimely and painful death. He ran to his wife, pale-faced, and frankly told her that he had seen something, then sketched out a picture of a girl. This drawing made its way to a neighbor, who commented that his house's former residence had a daughter whose imaginary friend was named Sally. Later, this girl confirmed the drawing strongly resembled her friend. At the same time, Deborah convinced Tony that they needed to bring a psychic to the house to help them figure out what was happening. Tony was previously hesitant, but at that time conceded and a psychic came to visit. The local psychic sent a young girl named Sally, who had died on the property and was especially comfortable in the nursery, as she felt the safest there. The Pigmans agreed with this assertion, as they had often had paranormal experiences there. The Pigmans and their friends and neighbors were referred to the ghost of Sally from that day on. The Attacks Deborah and the baby were spared from any attacks by the ghost, while Tony suffered the most. Some suspect that Sally only attacked men, as her death purportedly came at the hands of Charles Finney. She likely blamed men for how she died and would take her revenge on any male that visited the home. She perhaps felt unsafe in their presence and would therefore lash out. Sally's other activity, such as moving objects, were entirely peaceful, and her attacks would only come when she seemed to be angered or disturbed. As she was so young at the time of her death, this made her particularly dangerous and unpredictable. 
It's believed in the paranormal community that young ghosts are the most powerful. The Pickman family experienced many disturbing things in the two years that they lived in the Sally house, though Tony bore the brunt of any violence. This began with Tony being repeatedly scratched by an unseen force. This happened so many times that he caught it on camera, where it was clear that nothing was touching him, yet marks and scratches appeared on his body. This would often happen when he was either entering or leaving the house, sometimes finding himself bruised by the force of the attack. If another male were to visit, they would sometimes experience the same sensation. Tony would ignore the girl, not acknowledging when she became present, hoping this would stop the attacks. But this often had the opposite effect. Deborah tells one story of Sally biting Tony on the back of the thigh. He had been alone, lying on the couch in the living room, when this took place. The resulting wound could not otherwise be explained, as her son was only a few months old with no teeth. There is also a story of Tony waking up after hearing people in the house whispering through the walls. He felt a surge of panic and was unable to move, paralyzed in his bed. The whispers grew louder and louder and became more frantic until suddenly he felt as though he were being strangled. Then, after a few moments, the sensation disappeared, as did the noises. If people attempted to visit the Pickman's basement, bricks would sporadically come flying towards them as if someone were throwing them. There's been no conclusive explanation as why this happens. However, this also adds weight to the theory that Sally died in the basement. Her apparent refusal to allow anybody to visit the spot could prove that she was looking to guard it against anyone, perhaps so they would not suffer the same pain she once did. Some people have been critical of the Pickman's behavior towards Sally, claiming that they invited her in and made her feel welcome rather than trying to deter the ghost. It's reported that they gave her gifts, kept out toys which she liked, and left lights on in the rooms to keep her comfortable. Perhaps they thought this would keep the ghost at peace and less likely to hurt them or destroy their belongings. The ghost had something to play with by leaving out toys and would not need to amuse itself in other ways. Despite attacking Tony and their visitors, the Piglins wanted to make peace with this entity in their home. Ghost of a Young Girl or a Demon Some of the more unusual parts of the story of the Sally House are the reports of how dangerous and physically violent the spirit could be. Often, elements of the attacks on the Pigments seem more demonic than ghost-like. Aside from the attacks on Tony, the ghost would ignite fires out of nowhere, which is typically a sign of something much darker than an average haunting. Along with this, photos would be turned upside down, and reports of objects both levitating and moving on their own have led some to believe that something more sinister was happening in this house. Despite what the Pickmans and others saw, there's still no reason to believe that the Sally House could be haunted by a demon rather than the innocent ghost of a young girl. This demon could be masquerading as a sweet little girl rather than this being Sally herself. Some of the Pickmans' testimony at this time could go a long way to support this idea. For example, they complained they often smelled something foul in the house and could not find the source. They described it as a scent of burning sulfur. It's widely believed that the presence of a demon can be identified by such a smell with theorists attributing the smell of sulfur to hell and dark spirits. Psychics who have visited the house have had varied experiences and reported different findings. Some have determined that the spirit is, in fact, a seven-year-old girl who complains of pain and discomfort around her stomach and abdomen and does not seem violent. They believe that this is not a harmful spirit, but rather a trapped soul who died an untimely death. Others have found the exact opposite, advising that the house had a very dark presence and that it was feeding off the terror and anxiety inflicted upon the living. The spirit or demon was found mainly around the back of the home and in the basement where the brick attacks occurred. They believe the demon was there to cause harm. Much evidence has been gathered over the years from the Sally House. This includes photos and videos of paranormal activity. For example, one picture that supports the demon theory exhibits the silhouette of a young girl standing at a window with a horned demon behind her. This is viewed by some as proof that the demon is impersonating an innocent child for its sinister acts. A decade after leaving the house, the Pickmans returned with a team of paranormal investigators to assess the property. Once again, Tony became the target of an attack and was thrown back about four feet and pinned to the ground, unable to get up. The investigator called out, In the name of God, let him go. At this, he was released. Nonetheless, the Pickmans maintained the ghost wasn't necessarily a demon, as they remained there even with a very young baby. They would have left immediately if their son had been threatened, and he never was. The Pickman family also said that the ghost they saw did not look frightening. They found her to look sweet or innocent. However, this does not prove that it was not a demon. Some argue it could have taken any form to achieve this goal. So what is haunting the Sally House? Is it the ghost of a frightened young girl whose life was cut short or something much more sinister? There's also speculation that the Pickmans made up much of the story, seeking to capitalize on the fame and make some fortune. Skeptics view Deborah's book as proof of this as well as the Pickman's presence in paranormal circles, 
their speaking appearances, and their many interviews about their time in the home. However, even if the Pickmans financially gained from their experience, some find it difficult to deny the validity of the evidence they collected over the two years they lived there. Visiting the Sally House It is now possible to visit the Sally House in Atchison and experience the haunting yourself. As the house is believed to be so heavily haunted by a ghost who is sometimes violent, visitors must sign a waiver in case of injury. While there have been no confirmed attacks on guests since 1993, every precaution is taken to ensure that those in the house remain safe during their time there. Not only can you tour the Sally House during the day, but you can also book to stay overnight and have the entire experience of the haunting. This has become a popular option for thrill seekers and fans of the paranormal, especially around Halloween, when ghost activity is said to be at an all-time high. The best part about visiting the Sally House is drawing your own conclusion about what is happening on the premises. Visitors can decide whether they think something dark resides there or that the tale has been made up to encourage further visitors. All right, everybody. Hope you enjoyed What's Haunting the Sally House from Ghost Stories, a collection of the world's most haunted locations and paranormal encounters by author H.J. Tidy. Go and check out all H.J. Tidy's books in the show notes below, and they are available on Amazon, Kindle, and wherever fine books are sold. So thank you for tuning in and join us next time for a brand new author and brand new stories. Until then, stay safe out there and stay strange. <laughs>